you may have found that nifty little button inside of VMM 2012 that will automatically create a connection between VMM and Operations Manager. When you have that connection, uh, Operations Manager will automatically create a distributed application whenever you deploy a VMM service. But when you deploy that service, sometimes there comes the need to customize that service model that you've created. And doing so isn't terrifically easy. Unless, of course, you've uh, paid attention to my recent 70-246 series with CBT Nuggets. In this upcoming micro nugget from that series, I'll give you a taste on how to do that customization successfully. Working with this application designer, this distributed application designer, when you first try to wrap your mind around this, it can actually be a little bit imposing because of the way that Operations Manager exposes the different objects that you can pull into or components that you're going to pull into the workspace. So I'm going to start by just populating out a couple of different objects here, then we'll connect them together to create a service model. You'll begin to see now why I keep drawing those little circles with lines that are connecting to each other. So here under the component group, let's start by just putting uh, remote, desktop, session, hosts at the top. And in this case, we're going to be looking for some objects that correspond to remote, desktop, session, hosts. So let's kind of scroll down here and take a look at the logical entities, which are the, the, the vast majority of the things that I'm going to be interested in here for, for this at this level of monitoring. So, gosh, a whole bunch of stuff. APM stuff, application host, data set here. Oop, you know what? Computer role. Under computer role and uh, Windows computer role here, up there's remote desktop services computer role, and there's the RDSH Windows Server 2012 computer role. When I select this, it's going to create a nice little box that exists up here that is going to be the container for any of the objects that might get pulled into this this uh, this component. You'll know you've done things correctly when you pull a container out and it exists here in the workspace and you find examples of objects that can be pulled into that container that exist over here on the left. If you don't find anything, then you probably don't have any monitors that are or, or, or any objects that exist in the Ops Manager database that correspond with what it is you're trying to actually monitor on. So sometimes you'll find that just nothing appears. Well, then maybe you've actually grabbed the wrong object or the wrong component out of that list and you need to find a different component. That, that's the, the best example I can give you for how to keep poking around to finding what you're looking for because you will kind of pull your hair out, at least in the beginning, trying to identify which of these contain the right objects you're looking for. So let's say here for remote desktop session hosts, I know that, well, RDS is a host that I'm interested in. I know that uh, 01 is and 02 is as well. So those are some nice session hosts. Now for my environment to work uh, and for the RDSH servers to work, I know that they actually require the remote desktop web access component as well. But rather than focus on web access, let's actually focus on the IIS piece of web access instead. So let's call this RDWA IIS. And in this case, let's actually take a look for a different kind of component. Now let's look for a logical entity here. And you know what? Let's do computer role again, Windows computer role. But this time, instead of a remote desktop services computer role, let's look at an IIS server role, and specifically an IIS 8 server role. If I click OK here, you'll notice I have a whole bunch of objects that exist, because a lot of the servers in this environment have IIS 8 ver or version 8 installed onto them. Now, I'm interested in the RDWA instance, which is going to be here on the server rds.company.pri. So that's my second component that's now populated for for this uh, distributed application model that I'm creating. For IIS to function, uh, I know that IIS has got to work. Well, let's just create another dependency here. If IIS is working, but maybe something is in the way of IIS, my web, my web app may not be working also. So I kind of want to make IIS dependent on the fact that my web app can actually be viewed by some other external component, like a, an external watcher node. So let's go back in here to add component. And we're going to create another one called the RDWA site availability. And this RDWA site availability is something that also exists as a logical entity. 
And this time, I'm going to actually refer to one of the types of availability monitoring, the web app, web app availability monitoring that we worked with back on that last nugget. And actually, here it is right here, Web Application Availability Monitoring Solution Base Class. And what do you know? Uh, there's our RDS, RWA Web Availability Monitor, and our Web App Availability Monitor. So let's actually select one of these. Well, let's do the one we did actually the last time. Our Web App Availability Monitor, which happens to be Remote Desktop Web Access. There's that. And I'm going to drag that in here because this corresponds to the monitor that we just created. So now we're, we've got this, this, this you know, external outside-in monitoring that's, that's a dependency here inside the workspace as well. For all of this to work, right, for, for, the, for the, the IIS to function, the, the availability monitor needs to be successful. And for the availability monitor to be successful, well, we probably need, oh, I don't know, we probably would need some sort of, of router to also be working as well. Maybe my clients are existing in the 192.168.2 net and my servers are in the 192.168.1 net. So it would probably be a good idea for me to set up another component here that corresponds to a network interface that is the router. Because if that router doesn't work, the web app's not going to work. And if the web app doesn't work or isn't available, then IIS is definitely not uh, dispensing out uh, things. It's, it's, it's not functioning. And if IIS is not functioning, well, RDSH is not going to work as well. So let's call this uh, router, now let's even get more specific, 192.168.1.1 router connection. And the object I'm looking for here is a network type object that under logical entity, and I am looking for um, network, let's see here, I believe it's network adapter, and network adapter base class, and I'm looking for an interface because that's what we monitored back a couple of nuggets ago when we were talking about uh, network monitoring. Choose OK. Oops, good. It looks like we've got a couple of great interfaces here of which 192.168.1.1 is the interface I know I'm interested in. Uh, go back to that previous nugget and you can take a look at uh, why we're talking about 1.1. That is the, the IP address for my router. And if I plug that in here, well, now I've got the fourth item. So, wow. As you can imagine, this distributed application designer Pretty much the world is your oyster, and you can start creating as many of these things as you want and, and creating a, a service model that is as rich and complex as you want or as simple as you want as well. The, the last thing you'll need to do is just simply to create relationships between all the different objects that exist here. You know, our uh, our session hosts rely on IIS, and IIS relies on the site availability, and in fact, these session hosts rely on the router connection as well. And I can relay things out here to make sure that they're all uh, looking appropriate whenever I set this stuff up. Once I'm done with this, I can save things. Saving these things is going to essentially populate this whole distributed application with the stuff that's, that's I've been plugged in here. And after a couple of minutes, then the monitors will begin to turn on. Ops Manager will begin to start populating data into itself, corresponding with this application, the, this distributed app that we're creating. And I'll get that nice little green light that sits at the top that lets me know when something goes wrong. Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.